Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Senior Editor Tom Wright and today I'm joined by Richard from Jabra. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here and to kick us off with, I think it would be good to, I suppose, start with a quite high level question. Would you be able to talk through some of the challenges that you're seeing businesses face at the moment as they're you know, getting ready for hybrid work or maybe even started doing that? Yeah, um, certainly. I mean, it's all been a huge shift for us. We all know this, 18 months of uh, remote working, but we're really starting to see a, a change in those challenges now that hybrid is is coming forward. The greatest challenge is actually a relatively sudden and fundamental shift in what employees want um, and how quickly they are prepared to implement those changes. And we've recently been looking at a lot of data. We've run our own polls with um, the Harris Poll, which is a very well-known organization. And it's very clear to us that employees are starting to vote with their feet. Um, they are saying that they, the hybrid working is their ideal work week. So more than half of them are saying that they won't work for a company that means they have to come into the office five days a week. And more than half have already said they're changing jobs or they will change jobs for an employer that has hybrid work options. So this is quite startling, really. And and those employees are prepared to take those jobs um, at perhaps a lower salary if it means they can have the hybrid flexibility. So that's amazing. And that is, of course, a big challenge for a lot of businesses because, um, as I said, people will start leaving. Um, I think the the good news on the flip side of that is that we're seeing around nine in 10 businesses do want to use hybrid, do want to use that going forward. Um, but then the challenge is this huge change in mindset that's required by the corporation. It really does require changes throughout the organization to get hybrid working properly. Um, and you've, so you've got to devise a plan, you've got to implement it. And in fact, according to our, our, our data, communicating the plan is the most important part. I and mean, communication is always very, very important. And uh, again, though, only we say that around nine in 10 have decided they're going to do it. Only one in 10 are actually starting to do it right now. So there's actually this sort of time critical problem where employees are saying, I think I might look for another job and employers haven't quite implemented their their um, hybrid work plan yet. And the other thing is that companies need to figure out what hybrid works for them. Um, and there's a lot of guidance, but it's it's not necessarily suitable for that particular company. And it requires companies to really sit down and think what they're going to do with it. One of the pitfalls is that a lot of companies think, oh, hybrid, that must mean what we're doing now, i.e. remote work, plus uh, please come to the office two days a week. And it's really not that at all. It's a fundamental change in the way you use your workspace in the office. Um, utilize the office for things that require face-to-face -face collaboration, allow the employees to utilize uh, their homes for, for more personal work, for um, video calls and all of those sorts of things. It, it's not just a simple idea of you must come to the office two days a week. And then the other challenge is of course, reworking the office to suit hybrid and giving staff the equipment to, to have the right tools for, for hybrid working. So those multiple challenges, um, but it seems to us that uh, time is of the essence now because employees have had 18 months of difficulties and they're actually feeling a bit bullish and they're going, well, I've had 18 months of, of tricky trickiness at work. Um, I think I'm I think I'm going to look elsewhere. And it, it, we're seeing this time and time again from uh, employers losing people. And I suppose we all remember the scramble for devices well, 18 months or so ago now. And now we're in a place where perhaps businesses can look a bit more long term in terms of the, the, the equipment they're buying for their employees. So what kind of um, or what devices are you seeing demand for at the moment? Yeah, we, we did see that um, huge surge, of course, but the demand is still up and we're seeing our familiar models, the sort of Evolve series, which is the kind of thing I'm wearing at the moment for, for knowledge workers. That's still in high demand. But yeah, as you kind of indicated, the very first lockdown, companies tended to have bought cheaper, um, needed to get headsets out to their employees at home. Um, they perhaps didn't think that lockdown was going to last very long. 
now that companies are suddenly realizing that we could be working in this hybrid way forever now, um, they're starting to buy at the higher end of the market. So we're seeing more demand for Evolve 2 models. Uh, we're seeing a higher growth in Bluetooth versus corded because of the flexibility that gives you for hybrid work as well. And then, of course, the video space is exploding. Um, nearly all meeting rooms will be video equipped in the near future. Companies are looking at how to rework their offices for hybrid, but realizing they need a, a video camera in almost every every room now. The cost per room needs to come down. Rooms maybe need to get smaller. And so the explosion in video cameras for meeting rooms and personal cameras is, is really being felt. We've got our Panacast 50, which is a video soundbar. We've launched that recently. That's got off to a great start, really seeing a big demand for that. And we've got the Panacast 20, which is a personal video camera for the work from home and a, at a sort of 4K quality level, really good long-term solution because if you're the kind of brand, you know, ambassador for your brand, as it were, you need to look as good as possible. And you are going to be in video meetings for, well, in some cases, majority of your day. I, I certainly am, of course. <laughs> And then um, I can't help but smile a bit when I ask this next question. And there are still many people using um, consumer devices for you know, video meetings or maybe even you know, customer interactions. But what are the real benefits to having a you know, commercial product for, for your day-to-day -day work? Yes, I've noticed uh, you're using a, a consumer device for the meeting. And um, I think it's, we've talked a lot about audio devices, um, headphones for uh, the difference between consumer devices and enterprise devices. And it's it's all around the, the quality of the microphone pickup. It's about the ability to um, capture your voice and not voices of colleagues or indeed now family walking around you. Um, I think a lot of consumer devices when they're used seem very convenient to the user. And of course, you're using them for calls to the family, you're using them for music, why not use them for work as well? And it seems very convenient, but actually it can be very inconvenient to colleagues who are constantly hearing uh, background noise and everything else. And the companies we speak to um, also say it's extremely inconvenient for them because when something goes wrong, when there is a quality um, issue with the call, um, platforms like Teams report it back to them and they, they can see quite clearly that it's nearly always from a consumer device. So there is a bit of education needed for that. On the video side though, it's, it's really super important to have a true commercial product. We do still see customers who have kitted out meeting rooms with standard webcams. Um, they quickly, pretty quickly realize that that's not so suitable. Being able to capture uh, an entire meeting room with a, with a simple camera just doesn't really work. You need a camera that can see the entire room but then also intelligently focus on the right people in the meeting. We're um, talking a lot about equal pixel real estate right now. And that's the idea that in this hybrid world, you have eight people in a room and 20 people dialing in remotely. Every single one of those people should feel equally involved in that meeting. So you shouldn't just be looking at those eight people in the room and trying to make out who they are. You should be able to see them front and center. So advanced features like virtual director, which can look at um, the person speaking, but also if someone else joins in the conversation, can pull out and include them. Super important for the people on the other end of the call to feel like they're involved. And um, you simply can't get that from, from most consumer devices. And then there's things like, as you said, companies struggling to figure out how the meeting rooms need to look in hybrid. The consumer devices uh, don't have any features like this. We we have room occupancy data available, so you can stream the number of people in any given meeting up to uh, the cloud system and see on a real-time basis how your rooms are being used. You could make changes if you wish to. You can add safety guidelines, so you could say that that room there um, should only have five people in it. Please tell me when it gets over capacity. All of these things you're just never going to get from a uh, consumer device and it's super important.
I think um, you know, to finish off, we're going to be looking um, a bit more into the future, I suppose. And we've you know all had to adapt to remote working last year, and now many of us are adapting to hybrid working. But it's interesting to look a little bit further forward than that. You know, when we're past sort of this early stage of that hybrid working, have you sort of got an idea of you know any trends that you may expect to see unfold as we you know move out of this year and into the years beyond? Mm. Um, it's a it's a good question. I think there is a, I mean, we can see from the figures where we see that one in 10 companies have started to implement hybrid. But I think there's this sort of reticence of, is this for the future? Is this long term? But it is, it really is. All the data we're seeing right now is fun, showing sort of fundamental change in the way this is happening. So I think we need to embrace hybrid for the long term. Um, and we know that Remote working was very rocky for organizations. That's understandable. It was uncharted territory. But the data we have with hybrid really proves that because of the fundamental shift of people, people's attitudes to how they're employed, that they're demanding um, flexibility at work. We're seeing people moving out of cities to live in sort of um, wider areas because they are they know that they're going to be uh, working for a hybrid organization. I think the changes that we see and the the way that hybrid evolves will be interesting because every company's different. They've all got different goals, different cultures, different strategies. Um, I think that will evolve. There will be tweaks and negotiations as well in companies with employees. I've seen quite a few in, uh, companies who have set almost arbitrary limits on how many times you should be in the office every week. And I mean, we're, we're talking a lot these days at Jabber about um, principles, not policies. Quite dangerous to say, you must be in the office two days a week. Um, managers must be in the office three days a week, et cetera. Because you will just get uh, people wanting to negotiate and tweak with that. And, and actually, there will be this sort of um, thing where people will be saying well i came to the office two days a week and i was in a video call video calls for the whole time what was the point we would say come to the office for these types of work and stay at home for these types of work and then you can get because uh, employees can be trusted to to work in that way so i think we will see that developing we will see companies sort of getting to grips with with how hybrid work um how hybrid work works with their organization. Um, but it's very clear that one thing's not negotiable is the fact that hybrid work needs to exist in most companies. 59% um, of, of knowledge workers say they won't work for a company that requires them to come into the office five days a week, as I said. If you say you're you're going to have compulsory in-office work, then not only are you pulling from a tiny talent pool in the local area, you then have to deal with those 59% of people who said they simply won't do it. Your, your talent pool gets painfully small at that point. So long term, I think we're going to see changes in the job markets and the way people, um, their attitudes to, to jobs, maybe, as I said, wanting to have the flexibility, but willing to take a slight pay cut in doing so, fewer benefits. I think we're going to see differences and changes in recruitment. It'll be global or regional instead of local recruitment. We're already seeing changes in corporate real estate, office downsizing, people rekitting offices and all the things that are required. Yeah, and I think so it'll be a interesting time to see how this evolves. We're finding our feet. I think it'll probably take years before companies get truly comfortable with hybrid. Um, but as for something outside of that, I think we strongly believe that it's this is such a fundamental shift in um, people and employment, how people um, want to have flexible lives, um, that hybrid is here to stay, essentially. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it all unfolds and changes um, along the way. Richard, thank you so much for your time today. It's been great to have you. No problem. Thanks very much. And thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and a share on social media and we'll see you next time.